What is up, Neophytes? My name is Alan, aka Neocryptor, and welcome back to another Dark and Light server tutorial. Yep, that's right, we're doing it again. <laughs> if you guys watched my the last two tutorials, you learned how to set up the server, you learned how to use Steam command, etc. etc. Well, some of you in the comments have been asking me how we change the server settings. Simple answer is you do it via the, well, the not so simple answer, but the default answer is you edit the gameuser.settings.ini. But you know what? You don't need to do that. And in fact, you can ignore the other two, tu other two tutorials. Why is that so difficult to say? Other two tutorials. There we go. Um, because <laughs> I have a new one for you guys that's going to make your life a whole heck of a lot easier. And uh, yeah. So uh, a few days ago, they, a new tool was released called the Dark and Light Server Manager. Uh, many of you may be familiar with this actually because it is a direct port, and you know what, let's get rid of that. It is a direct port of the Arc Server Manager, but tailored to work with Dark and Light. So we're going to go over this today. We're going to show you how to set it up, how to use it. We're going to show you how to set up a fresh server, how to edit the settings. We're going to show you how to import your already created server. So if you followed my other tutorials um, and I already have a server running, uh, you can import it into this uh, application so you can control all the settings and everything from the application without having to set up a brand new server. So stay tuned for that. Uh, let's go ahead and jump right into this. Okay, so down in the description of the video, there will be a link to this page, the dnlservermanager.freeforums.net slash thread slash two slash downloads. What a mouthful, I might add. Uh, so you'll go here, and the on the page here, we'll show you the latest server manager version, the installers, and right below the installers is the latest dot zip. Uh, I recommend you grabbing that. So do they. It's pretty simple. So we just go boop like that. Save it, it'll go to our downloads file. It's pretty small, only 8.3 megabytes. As we can see, it's already done. So get out of there and go ahead and close this. By the way, guys, um, if you are watching this a little bit in the future, you know, any basically what is today's date? Today is August 7th, 2017. Uh, make sure you take a look at this page for the patch notes and stuff. And uh, yeah, just, uh, just as FYI. All right, so after you get it downloaded, I uh, come into your folder. It's going to be here. It's going to be latest.zip. I really recommend renaming it to something that's a little bit more descriptive, like maybe DNL server manager.zip. I don't know. That seems to make sense to me. Uh, if you're running, if you're running 7-zip, you can right click and extract. Uh, if you're not in Windows, I think Windows 7 forward, there is this handy dandy little extract button. Once you have the file highlighted, you can just click that. And uh, you can extract all. Why is that working? Whatever. Anyway, it it will work. Uh, I use Seven Zip, so that's probably interfering a little bit. But if you know, if you're not familiar with Seven Zip, by the way, guys, it's a free utility. Look it up. I love it. It opens every kind of freaking compressed file there is known to man, and it's free. Seriously, it's it's good. You should get it. Okay, so you get the DNL Server Manager. Next, you're gonna want to copy that because we don't want to leave it in our downloads folder. In fact, we want to move it out of user space. By user space, I mean, we, it doesn't go in your desktop, documents, music, pictures, dot, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You're gonna wanna copy it something like, yeah, your C drive, or if you have a separate drive for games, uh, copy it over there. For this tutorial, we're just gonna go ahead and paste it onto our C drive. And then next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna come in here, open it up, and you'll find the DNL server manager.exe. I recommend, not necessary, but I recommend right clicking it and putting a shortcut on our desktop. Um, Why well, I have two of them, I don't really know. So let's go ahead and delete that one. Um, <laughs> but the reason for this is that way you don't have to navigate back to this folder every time you want to start it. Uh, at this point, you can you know close it, minimize it, whatever. We can just double click our shortcut. It's gonna say that this needs to be ran as admin, which you know, it's par for the course, just click yes, it's fine. All right, guys, for some reason, uh, while I was recording, uh, when I accepted the admin rights for starting the program, it didn't capture the, the, the following few seconds of footage. So let me give you guys a recap. Basically, what is going to happen is when you start this, this is going to ask you for it to create a directory or to tell it a directory to save your profiles, your server profiles, that is, and Steam command. 
Uh, what I recommend doing is in the, the DNL server manager folder, uh, putting a, you know, a folder called DNL data. Once you do that and click OK through the settings, it will automatically download Steam command and install it here. And uh, that's basically what you guys missed. It's pretty simple. If you need any direct help with that, feel free to ask me. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Okie dokie. So moving along. After all that is done, you get, come up with this cool little window right here. Uh, what we need to do from here is to go ahead and just click the little plus button. It's going to pop up a new profile. Uh, we're going to name that whatever you want. It's mainly for organizational purposes. This is not the name of your server. We're going to call it Toot for tutorial. Yeah. Uh, the next thing we do, uh, we need to do is hit the install button. Now this is going to automatically download the um, server from Steam. No hassle, no fuss, no muss. It's using Steam command just like we did in the last tutorials, except it's automating the process for us so we don't have to worry about it. Uh, it will take a little bit of time to uh, download it, so I'm going to make a cut here and bring you guys back after it's done. Uh, another thing to keep in note, if you're waiting for the part where I show you how to import a pre-existing server into this, um, yeah, just uh, skip around a little bit. Maybe if I remember, I'll put a time stamp down in the description below that will skip you straight to that point. But my memory is it, it is so full of holes. It makes a wiffle ball look complete. Anyway, I'll be back with you guys in a minute. Okay, guys, so once it gets done, the window will look a little something like this. You know, finish upgrade process. It'll be your final thing here at the bottom. Uh, if you ran into any errors while doing this, best thing to do is uh, hit your save button here and then just restart the process or you know, restart the program rather, not the process, close the program, restart it and hit the uh, install, it'll say install instead of upgrade verify here. Uh, but yeah, that'd be the best thing to do. So our server is now installed. Next step, what you want to do is come down here and this is when we start configuring things. So. We're going to call this the Tuts King server. <laughs> why not? Because reasons, that's why. And then you can change your passwords, you know, everything you want down here. It will automatically assign some gibber, some actually pretty decently strong passwords, but you're, you're, you're not gonna remember them. I, I, I'm just saying, these are ridiculous, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, you can modify your ports and everything right here. If you want to use the uh, a specific band list, you can set it up here. You can set your max players, the idle timeouts, you know, all the basic admin stuff, you know, message of the day, uh, yada, 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 on and on and on. So, but the main thing that everybody asks me is how do you change the, the XP? How do you change the harvesting rates and things like that? Fair enough. To come down to environment. Down here, you can adjust your taming speed. It goes, the slider goes up to 10. If you really want more than 10, you can just type it in here. So let's go blah, 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 there. there. There's our new taming speed. That's actually way too high and it won't work, but you get my point. So, you know, you can set it to 50, whatever. Uh, your harvest amount, same thing goes here. You, you got sliders for it, respawn, resource respawns, how long it takes. Obviously in this case, the lower, the better. Um, suppress radius, which is what the player, which means in, you know, there's a, mul a multiplier that says resources will not respawn within X meters of the player. Uh, well, you can adjust that multiplier here to make it larger or smaller. Same thing goes for structures. You know, if you want to, you want things to spawn back in and pretty close to your structure, lower that down. Uh, you can adjust the custom, you know, you can adjust custom harvest amounts for things. So, you know, if you want something if you feel like just like one item you're not getting as much of it as you should you could enable this come down here and adjust it uh to your liking you can set your day cycle speed nighttime global spoiling everything you need for the most part is under the environment settings cool so uh under creature settings we have you know your xp the tame damage tamed resistance wild damage wild resistance you can come down here and customize, you know, swap out spawns, do per stat level multipliers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so really handy tool. It has everything you want. Under structures, this is where you can disable structure placement collision. That way you can have things clipping into the terrain a little bit. Make, might make building just a tad bit easier, just saying. 
but yeah, all your settings for you know structures, the decay rates, everything is right here. Uh, you can enter in custom things into your game user settings if you so desire. I really don't know what one would add for this game because there's no mods yet. Uh, if you had mods, say like structures plus from Arc, uh, you would you could come in here say add a you know structures plus tag exit yes i know i spelled plus wrong i i saw that i'm i'm not going to change it because that's why nah uh then you get in it add in an a, a key for that like i know it has uh you know small chest inventories or inventories can be adjusted so this is not the right tag for it obviously we're just going to call it end and then under value we're going to type in 100 so now or a thousand so like if this was a thing then the inventories would have a thousand slots but i mean that's just kind of like an example of what this area is for uh, it really doesn't apply to the game as of yet once mods start hitting the scene then it probably will um custom level progression if you want a higher level cap for you or your dinos this is where you set it up you enable that and you can add in you know, uh, say 61 is the max level, right? You click the button, now it's 62, and it added, uh, made it 1,000 more XP, more expensive, 2,000 XP, more expensive, so forth and so on. Uh, so you can adjust that pretty easy here, and then all you have to do is hit the save button up here, and this little arrow, make sure you hit the arrow if you adjust this, because otherwise you're not going to reach those new levels, because the XP level cap is still set at the original value, unless you update it, and that's what this arrow does. So, but this applies for both players and for dinos. All right, guys, that covers most of the settings uh, that people have asked me about in the comments on the previous tutorials and such. Uh, you know, just take a look through these settings. It's very powerful. Most of it is pretty self-explanatory as to what it does. Uh, so, yeah, just don't be afraid to uh, don't be afraid to experiment. Because you can always undo your experiment and revert back. So not a big deal there. And if you're familiar with Arc Server Manager, like I said, this is a port of it, then you're already ahead of the game and good to go. So the next thing I recommend after setting up your server, uh, and now this is something I have to do because it doesn't work right otherwise. Uh, we're going to hit save. And it's going to check, do this. It takes a second for it to actually go through. It checks to make sure the uh, directory permissions are correct. And then it saves it. And then I'm going to close this. And then I'm going to start it again. Now, the reason I do this. So the reason I do that is if I do not do that, the when it doesn't save my INI settings that I just went down here and tweaked. So like if I started a server, it wouldn't say, you know, King server or whatever. Uh, nothing that I set would have actually applied. But so I always start it or I always set everything. I save it. Then I re then I restart it. And now you only have to do that uh, the first time you set up a server. So and after that, I haven't had that problem. Uh, so the next thing you do is just simply hit the start button and it will start the server up. And again, you know, on my system, this takes a little bit of time. So we're just going to let it run. And let it do its thing as you can see it's starting up here it notice that the start button turned into a stop button so you know that's how you will stop your server as well it's just come over here and hit stop and it'll stop the server so while this is doing its thing let's talk about how to import a pre-existing server actually let's go ahead and stop the server um, so to import same process pretty much we create a new tab next though is completely different all you need to do is come over here to this import button, like so. And then we're going to navigate to where we have our server installed. Uh, where do I have that installed? I think it's in Steam command, DNL server. Yep. Uh, then we'll go into DNL and saved config Windows server game user settings to I and I. And now if we look here, Neophyte Paradise, that's the server we set up in the previous tutorial. It's all, you know, set up and good to go. And now you have full control over it from right here. Uh, and you just hit save, name this, so like name it whatever you want. The other server. Man, I cannot spell today or type. Maybe that's that. I can't type today. Other server. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> save it. And now you have control. 
So another thing to note when importing um, a pre-existing server into the server manager is you do not have to have the server stopped. So if your server is running and there's people playing, you know, doing whatever, it doesn't matter. It will automatically, uh, it will import it and it should automatically detect that the server is running and that start button up here should change to the stop button. So you should be good to go. All right, guys, that really covers it for this tutorial. Uh, DNL Server Manager is a great, great piece of software. I absolutely love it. Uh, I've used Arc Server Manager religiously, even if I, even though we don't host our, we don't host Arc servers out of my house for Gaming Evolve. Uh, you know, I use it to generate my uh, my game user settings .ini and everything like that because it's such a great tool for doing that. I mean, even if you're, you know, even if you're not using it to run a server. It is a wonderful tool for setting up INIs because, you know, you can create a quote-unquote fake server, whatever, you know, and never run it. Just go and change it. all the settings you want, hit save, and then you can come down and hit this button to open the server setting, and you can go in and find your INI that you just did, and, whoops, wrong folder, <laughs> save. You can come in, find your, your INIs, copy them, and then paste it to wherever you need it. It is pretty cool, pretty handy. Uh, and uh, I absolutely, absolutely love the program. As you can see, our server did start up. Uh, it took uh, 134.2 seconds, give or take. <laughs> and it is run. Um, I don't feel I don't feel like launching Dark and Light, but you know it, it's running. It's the same way. It's all the exact same things apply. And then you have some extra settings in here if you want. If you open up the global here, you can set up uh, you know a like restarts and uh, backups, uh, email notifications. There's oh so many options in this program. So I totally, totally suggest you guys checking it out because it is the easiest way to manage a dark and light server at this point. Or, yeah, or Arc server for that matter. Anyway, guys, that is it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you did, make sure you give me a good fond thumbs up if you're watching it on YouTube and upload it if you're watching this on Vidme because it helps us out a great deal. And uh, until next time, guys, this is Neo, and I'll see you in game. Bye.